Hey students, good afternoon and welcome back to Diksha Vedantu channel. This is your master teacher Navya and in this particular session we will be covering all the important diagrams from this particular chapter the control and coordination. Right? So yeah, before starting this session once I would like to confirm that am I audible students? Just let me know in the comment section, am I audible? Is the PPT visible? Is my voice clear? Let me check once. Yes, yes. So, the live has started. Right? So, in our previous session, we have discussed the important uh, diagrams from the life process chapter. Right? And at the end, I even summarized the entire chapter. Right? So, now we will start with the control and coordination part. Okay, students, in between if you have any doubts, if you have any doubts uh, part, like related to this chapter, feel free to comment in the comment section. Okay, hi Vivek, hi, good afternoon. Okay. So, the first important diagram in this chapter is, see when you compare this chapter with the life process uh, chapter, uh, the life process chapter has much diagram when you compare with this. See, in this particular uh, chapter, uh, the structure of neuron can be asked for, you know, 2 mark or 3 mark, not more than that. And then the reflex action is important. The diagram of reflex action is important. And the brain diagram is not mostly asked in this chapter. Instead, you will have to remember the parts of the brain and its function. That is very important. Okay, so the first one is, the first one that is there in this chapter is the neuron, <coughs> structure of neuron, right. So, what is neuron? It is the, uh, it is nothing but it is nerve cell, it is the structural and functional unit of the nervous system, right. And then, hi, hi students, good afternoon, good afternoon Prashant, good afternoon. Okay, so now look at this, see here uh, the, uh, you know, Neuron, it has got dendrites and then it has got, which is then followed by cell body and then there is this elongated part which is called as axon, right? After axon at the ending there is, what is that? That is nerve ending, right? So, what is the function of dendrite students? What is the function of dendrite? What is the function of dendrite? Comment in the comment section students. See? The dendrite, it is that branched part, right? See, it is that uh, tentacle-like structure that receives information from the external environment or from the neighboring neuron. Yes, it receives. It receives the information, right? Yes, Uttam, thank you, thank you. Now, let's focus on the chapter. Let's focus over here, right? Prakash, ma'am, can we include information that is not given in the book? And in the answer, yes, students, you can see if it is relevant and if it is meaningful, you can add point. Now, for example, in the life process chapter, like I was explaining the structure of heart over there, see the four different walls that are present. I named them, right? See, that is not there in your syllabus. But then if you want, you can add, add that. If you, if you want, you can add those points. Okay, you can add only if it is relevant and don't add too much of extra point. One or two point is fine. Okay. Clear with that? So, the dendrite, what is it doing? It receives the information either from the neighboring neuron or from the external environment. Right? Okay, fine. And then there is cell body. See, the cell body has got nucleus and it has got certain cell organelles with it. What is the function of cell body? What is the function of cell body? It regulates the function of nerve cell. It just regulates the function of nerve, nerve cell. Okay? And then the cell body is followed by axon. It is then followed by axon. Axon is this elongated body. And in between the axon, you can see this yellow colored thing that is there. What is it? See, it is, <coughs> what is this? It is myelin sheath, right? It is myelin sheath. What is it actually? It is fat, right? It is fat, which wraps this axon part. And then there is gap in between each uh, myelin sheath. Why do you think that there is this uh, myelin sheath? 
that is present in the axon what is its function and why there is gap can anyone mention can anyone comment in the comment section that what's the reason what's the function of myelin sheath what is it doing over there and then comes the nerve ending which is a hair like structure that transfers the inform that transfers the information to the corresponding neuron okay clear with that fine now what is the function of what's the function of myelin what's the function of myelin sheath that is present in the axon see the myelin what is it doing it it regulates the rate of transmission of impulse right you know right the mes message is transmitted so fastly why it is because of the presence of myelin and this the gaps that are present in between myelin it makes sure that the message does not it will not break it will be continuous okay clear with that so students even if you don't practice this neuron di diagram i'm 100% sure that in your examination you can draw because see how been studying about this neuron since your class 9th right from the tissue chapter diagram aayega exam mein see they might see this is not that important even if the ask this is asked for uh, you know 3 mark 3 mark you will have to draw the diagram explain the parts label the parts neatly and then you will have to explain it okay clear with that what prashan what had you asked connection to another neuron what is it come again this what are you saying prashant okay so this is all about neuron students okay shall we move on to the next one see like i told you in between see uh, in the axon part there are myelin sheath which is not continuous there is gap in between right what is that called as that is called as nodes of ranveer right what is its function one is it behaves like a you know it functions as a insulation why to minimize the dissipation of the electrical impulse in order to maintain that continuity in order to maintain that continuity okay and also the periodic gap in the myelin sheath are called as nodes of ranveer so when you draw the neuron diagram you can also mention this as well okay this is all about neuron fine clear with that okay so the next one this is one of the important concept that is impulse transmission the transmission of electrical impulse is one of the important concept from this even the uh, it can be asked for five mark also okay so let's see how the question will be asked and like you all know the message how is it transmitted through neuron it will be in electric form right it will be in electric form and you all know right that when the neuron receives the message uh, at the dendrite when it is receiving it is in chemical form it is in chemical form after receiving at dendrite it is converted to electrical form you all know that right right so here the message is transmitted in its electrical form clear and now see the question can be asked like this that why does the flow of signal in a synapse from axonal termin axon axonal end of one neuron to the dendritic end of the another neuron take place but not in the reverse direction you all know right the message uh, the electrical impulse it is transmitted in one direction only it does not move backward <clears throat> can anyone guess why who is it that is facilitating the one word uh, movement of the electrical impulse what is it can you name that neurotransmitter can you name that neurotransmitter just like we studied right in the transportation system the circulatory system in human being there were valves that were present in the veins and also in the heart what was the function of that valve it was preventing the backward flow right similarly in our neuron also there is something that is present at the axon terminal which makes sure that the electrical impulse are transmitted in one direction only they will not reverse back okay so this is one of the important question the diagram based question that can be asked from this chapter right see like you all this is that synapse the gap between two neuron right so when you zoom this when you zoom this the image will be like this right so here 
it has got this is the axon terminal the axon terminal it forms a knob whereas this is dendrite the dendrite it is forming a depression right so this knob is this is presynaptic neuron and this is the synaptic cleft nothing but the tiny gap that is present between the two neuron and this is filled with a fluid this region is filled with a fluid and this dendrite it forms a postsynaptic neuron okay and in the axon terminal like you all can see there are vesicles that are present right these within these vesicles you can see that red color molecular thing what is that it is neurotransmitter it is a chemical messenger right which this is the one which makes sure the that the electrical impulse travels in one direction okay so what happens is that when the electrical first what happens the dendrite receives the chemical nature the message in the chemical nature and at the dendrite that is converted into electrical form and then that electrical impulse it travels through cell body axon and when it reaches the axon terminal in the axon terminal like you all can see there are vesicles that are present which carries neurotransmitter so once the electrical impulse uh, you know reaches this region it will stimulate these neuro it will stimulate these vesicles what are these vesicles these are synaptic vesicles which are carrying the neurotransmitter and then what happens once they are stimulated the neurotransmitters are released like you can see the neurotransmitters it is diffusing into the you know synaptic cleft along with that even the electrical impulse is transmitted along with that even the electrical impulse is transmitted okay so over here what happens that electrical nature of the message that is converted to chemical form that is converted to chemical form okay and then the dendrite receives the message in the chemical form it will be in chemical nature and then that is converted to electrical uh, electric in the dendrite okay clear with the students it is neurotransmitter which makes sure that the it is uh, the movement of the impulse electrical impulse is one direction <coughs> okay clear with that you can see in this synaptic cleft only in one side only in the one side the neurotransmitters are concentrated whereas on the other side it is not concentrated it is because of that it ensures that the electrical impulse it always trans uh, it always moves from uh, the uh, you know neurotransmitter where it is concentrated to the region where the neurotransmitter is not that concentrated okay yes this is one of the important concepts from which the question can be asked okay see here the neurotransmitter these are the chemical messenger for example acetylcholine it can be acetylcholine it can be dopamine okay what is their job it is to transmit the signals from nerve cell to the target cell from nerve cell to the target cell okay uh, will they ask to draw or label diagram see the student the thing is in case if they ask this question for 5 mark then you will have to draw this diagram and label it if it is asked for 5 mark or else in case if they ask for 3 mark not needed or else they might give the diagram and they might ask you to label the parts also and explain the concept mostly they do like that it to be on the safer side it would be better if you practice the diagram okay fine so this is how you will have to present your answer right see look at this at the synapse at the synapse what is happening the axon terminal it comes at a close proximity to the dendron terminal of the next neuron that's what i showed this is the synapse and here the axon terminal it is coming closer to the dendrite right okay and then what happens the axon what is it doing it is forming that knob synaptic knob and the other dendrite terminal it forms postsynaptic depression like i told you see this is the knob this is the axon knob whereas this is the dendrite it is the postsynaptic depression okay and then what happens in between the two it lies there is a there is a gap right in that gap it is the gap is actually filled by a fluid which is called as synaptic cleft okay and then as the nerve impulse once like i told you once the nerve impulse uh, the electrical impulse once it reaches the once it reaches the axon terminal what happens it will stimulate those synaptic vesicle due to which the neurotransmitter in the 
where synaptic it is released. The neurotransmitter are released and then these neurotransmitter molecule they diffuse across the gap in contact with the postsynaptic membrane. Okay, so in this way, in this way, the nerve impulse passes across the minute gap to stimulate dendron of the another neuron. Okay. So, what I have explained the same thing I have mentioned over here. You will have to present your answer in this way. Okay. And then the synapse act as a one-way valve. See, the, it is synapse which is acting as a one-way valve. And you would have observed, right, that chemical substance which is released is more concentrated on one side of the synapse. Right. One side of the synapse, it is very much concentrated, that is on the axonal side. And it carries impulse across the synapse and passes it to dendron of the other neuron. Right? And in this way, the impulse travel across the neuron only in one direction. Right? That is from the axon of one neuron to the dendrite of the another neuron. Okay? So, the concept is very easy and simple, right? You will have to just, you know, you should be very careful in labeling. And this concept, you might, some students might get confused, but then it's okay, fine, you can, you know, revise it again and again and it will get clear. Okay, clear with this? So, this is one of the important diagrams from which the question can be asked. See, look at this. The, it is synapse that acts like one-way valve, right? At the synapse, what happens? The neurotransmitter is present. On one side, it is more concentrated. On one side, it is more concentrated because of which, which makes sure that the transmission of electrical impulse is in one direction. Okay. Fine. <coughs> the next important concept in this chapter is reflex action. It is reflex action. So, what, what are reflex actions? So, how the question can be asked? What a reflex action? Give to example and explain a reflex arc. Students, you know the difference between reflex action and reflex arc, right? Reflex arc is the pathway. Reflex arc is the pathway. Whereas reflex action, it is the immediate response. It is the immediate involuntary response. Right? So, here from this chapter, uh, you know, the diagram-based question, uh, this can be another important diagram-based question. It is one of the important diagram-based question, I would say. Okay, so what is reflex action? It is immediate involuntary response to the stimulus. Right, it is involuntary, right? So now, I said it is involuntary. So now, here, what is the difference between involuntary movement and the reflex action? Hi, Tarun. Hi, welcome back. Welcome back. So now, what is the difference between reflex action and the involuntary movement? See, even reflex action is also, it is immediate and it is involuntary response, right? What is the difference? I want you all to uh, mention that point, that important difference between the reflex action and the involuntary movement. Hi Rahul, hi, good afternoon all of you. What is the dif difference Tarun? Can you mention what is the difference between the reflex action and the, uh, you know, the involuntary movement? Come on, comment in the comment section. Not control is R. No, 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 no. See here, this is also involuntary. This is also involuntary, right? See, the thing is, in case of reflex action, reflex action is not controlled by anything and it is sudden. Yes. See here, one more important thing is, uh, see here, the brain is not involved. Instead, spinal cord is involved. See, in case of involuntary movement, which part of our brain controls that involuntary movement? Which one? Which part of the brain controls involuntary movement? Involuntary is controlled by hind brain and sudden. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Now the reflex action. 
See the thing is here it is it is controlled by here the brain is not involved. Only spinal cord is involved. That is the difference between involuntary action and the reflex action. Here spinal cord is involved instead brain is not involved. Okay. Yes Krish it is medulla. It is medulla oblongata. Okay. See the example like I told you. Here what are, what are all the examples for uh, the reflex action. You can name some of them. See suddenly pulling back your hand immediately on touching a hot object or else you know watering of mouth on seeing delicious food and then you know closing of eyes on a sudden flash of light right and then getting scared by sudden appearance of object or people right okay these are all the example and what is important is that you will have to draw the diagram and explain the pathway good afternoon good afternoon Anmol <coughs> <laughs> Tharun, now let's focus on reflex action, okay? Anyway, in the evening there is V quiz, you can ask sir that time, okay? Yeah. Fine? Okay. So now you all, uh, when the reflex action question is asked, students, you will have to draw the diagram, right? Best example is uh, you consider that, you know, a person touching hot vessel. You can include that. Okay, students, see the first step. What is the first step? It is the stimulus is received by the sensory receptor. Now, for example, let me tell, like I touched a hot object. I was turning that side. Without my knowledge, I touched a hot object and immediately I took my hand back. Right. So, now that is example for reflex action. Now, what happened? How did I feel the heat? How did I felt that heat? What is it that is present in my fingers? What is present in the skin? Receptor. Which type of receptor are present in the skin? Students, come on, comment in the comment section. Now, let's finish this control and coordination. Come on, comment in the comment section. Which receptor is present in skin? Tarun, Krishu, which receptor is present in the skin? Come on, comment in the comment section. It is thermoreceptor, right? It is thermoreceptor. So now what happened? It could, it transmitted that message. So who receives, who receives that uh, message from the thermoreceptor? Which type of neuron? In our body, there are three types of neuron. No, can you name them students? What are the three types of neuron? Sensory neuron, motor neuron, and then there is one more. What is that? Sensory, motor and then there is one more. I want you all to comment in the comment section. Okay. So, first what happens is that the thermoreceptor, it transmits that message to the, which, uh, sen which neuron receives it? It is sensory neuron receives that message. And the sensory neuron, it transmits that message where it to the associated neuron which is present in the spinal cord which is present in the spinal cord and usually in the normal cases what happens is that in other involuntary movement in which the brain is involved what happens is that the associated neuron it will transmit that electrical impulse to brain but in case of reflex action the associated neuron this associated neuron it will transmit the response to the here motor neuron and then the motor neuron sends that to the target organ that is nothing but effector. See here only spinal cord is involved whereas brain is not involved. Okay here brain is not involved. Okay clear with that and always students the sensory neuron it always reaches the back side of the spinal cord and then there is associated neuron and then the motor neuron it comes from the front side of the spinal cord. It comes out from the uh, front side of the spinal cord. Okay. Clear with that students. This is all about reflex action. And you will have to draw this diagram. This is one of the <laughs> important concepts from which the question can be asked. Okay. Hmm. See the knee jerk is also one more example. Like you can see this happens right. If you get if someone hits. Uh, you know your knee immediately you will lift the leg that is also reflex action okay clear with that fine and then reflex arc is the pathway reflex arc is that shortest route that
that can be taken by an impulse from a receptor to an effector. Okay, clear with that? This is all about this is all about the reflex action. Okay, students. Fine. And then the next uh, the diagram that is there in the control and coordination is brain. Okay. So till now they have not asked you to draw the structure of brain. Instead, what you will have to remember the parts, different parts that are present in brain, and you will have to mention the functions. That is important. So now we'll see the parts, different parts that are present in brain, and what are its functions. The from this concept, pakka question will be there. Okay. So now, like you know, you all know that the brain is divided into three main parts: fore brain, mid brain, and hind brain. Right? Again, the fore brain is divided into three main parts: that is cerebrum, thalamus, and hypothalamus. What, ma'am? In short, yes, yes, I spoke about this as well. It has cerebrum has got four lobes, right? I've already spoken about that, right? Once I'm recapping everything, okay? So now let's see the function of each part, right? Come on, students, tell me now what is the function of cerebrum? What is the function of thalamus? And what is the function of hypothalamus? Can you all comment in the comment section? What is the function of cerebrum? See, you all know, right? The cere cerebrum it is the uh, largest part in the brain it constitutes 85 percent right and it is that gray matter and uh, then the cerebrum it has got two hemispheres right hemisphere and left hemisphere and both the hemisphere how are they connected they are connected through a corpus callosum they are connected through a corpus callosum right okay so now what is the function of cerebrum see here it is, it controls the way you, you know, it controls the logical reasoning, your intelligence, consciousness, willpower, everything. Yes, cerebrum main thinking part. Yes, thalamus, it regulates or controls the pituitary gland. Yes. Ah, ra, is it thalamus or hypothalamus that controls the pituitary gland? Are you sure with that? Is it thalamus or hypothalamus? Check that once. Right? And then, like I have already told you, the cerebrum, it has got four important lobes. What are those lobes? Here it is divided the four important lobes. What are they? Occipital lobe, frontal lobe, occipital lobe, right? Parietal and temporal. The frontal lobe, it is present at the front, right? What is its function? It controls the movement, muscular movement and all that. Motor neurons and all that. What about parietal lobe? It controls the, uh, the sensation of pain, pressure and all that. What about occipital? It is, the occipital is, you know, uh, with, uh, it is linked with the vision. Whereas temporal, it is, the temporal, it controls the, uh, the you know, the processing of language, what you are speaking and all that. Okay, students, clear with that? Fine. And then thalamus, thalamus, what is it doing? It relays pain and pressure impulse to the cerebrum. And this is where the thalamus is present. You might get questions like this students, they will give you the diagram and you will have to label that part and mention its function. They might not ask you to draw the diagram of uh, brain. Instead, they will ask you to label the parts and you will have to mention the functions. Okay. Fine. And then comes hypothalamus. Hypothalamus, it is located at the base of thalamus. And what is it doing? Hypothalamus is the one. Hypothalamus is the one that controls the pituitary, uh, you know, the glands. Okay. Yes, pressure lobes are not there in the syllabus. But in case, if you want, you can add that point. Okay. So what is hypothalamus actually doing? It regulates thirst and at times you feel hungry, at times you feel full. That is controlled by hypothalamus and it also regulates body temperature. 
which one hypothalamus minimum three functions if you mention that is more than enough okay fine and then comes the midbrain and then comes midbrain it connects forebrain and hindbrain it uh, it like it is like a bridge it acts like a bridge and then it transmits the signal from hindbrain and forebrain okay it will transmit the signal from hindbrain and forebrain fine okay and then like you all know it is responsible to control all the activity that do not involve thinking like blinking of eyes and when you sit down on a chair you might you know turn around and all just like that it does not require much of thinking right so that is controlled by midbrain so midbrain it performs those activity which does not require much of thinking okay fine and then comes your hind brain again hind brain is divided into three parts see cerebellum pons and medulla oblongata what is cerebellum doing <coughs> what is cerebellum doing cerebellum it it controls the body posture right now the cerebellum which is also called as it is also called as tiny brain <coughs> right it is located below the cerebrum and it is very tiny what is its function what is its function like you can see the person is walking on the straight line it helps in balancing a body and also riding cycle or picking up a pen or pencil if something falls immediately you will pick them up right so who controls all of that it is cerebellum okay and then comes medulla oblongata see the medulla oblongata it extend it extends to form what spinal cord the spinal cord it extends from this medulla oblongata only and then what is the function of medulla oblongata already all have mentioned that it controls the blood pressure it also controls salivation vomiting and most that's what all the involuntary act, uh, activities actions are controlled by medulla oblongata okay students clear with that and then comes pons this is not that important it is just the tinier region which is you know located below the cerebellum right and what is it doing it acts as a relay center between the cerebellum and the forebrain it is the respiratory center of the brain okay so this is all about brain from brain they will not ask you to draw the diagram instead they will give the diagram and then they will ask you to label the part they themselves might mark and they you you they will point out that which part you will have to label you will have to label that part and mention the function of that part okay function is very important functioning is very very important if they ask how to draw brain ma'am give easy trick tarun trust me brain diagram will not be asked even if they ask it is very easy see look at this you will have to know the parts where is forebrain midbrain hindbrain and then it will be easy for you to draw here you can see you know the color is different you can see right there is color differentiation if you want you can take screenshot of this okay mostly 99% they will not ask you to draw brain diagram because there are other important diagrams which you will have to draw right you will have to label the part and mention the function okay fine and then in this chapter that these are the important diagrams from control and coordination okay from control and coordination the first one is the neuron diagram which can be asked for two marks max to max three marks not more than that and after that there is reflex action right that is important and then brain diagram like you will have to label the parts and then mention its function okay and then these are i just added this tabular column just to talk about the hormones that are secreted within our body right you all know no hypothalamus really it will secret releasing hormone which controls the release of hormones from the pituitary gland right what about pituitary gland it secretes growth hormone it regulates growth thyroid thyroxin and that regulates the basal metabolism of the body and then comes adrenal which releases adrenaline right and then 
इट प्रिपेयर द बॉडी फॉर एमरजेंसी कंडीशन इट इज लाइक फाइट फ्लाइट एंड फ्राइट राइट एंड देन पैनक्रिया इट सेक्रेट्स इंसुलिन विच रेगुलेट्स ब्लड शुगर लेवल इन द बॉडी एंड देन कम्स टेस्टिस इट विल सेक्रेट टेस्टोस्टिर विच हेल्प इन द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ सेकेंडरी सेक्शुअल कैरेक्टरिस्टिक इन मेल वेर एज इन केस ऑफ फीमेल इट इज ओवरीज विथ सेक्रेट्स ईस्ट्रोजन एंड प्रोजेस्टिर ईस्ट्रोजन प्लेज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल इन मेन्स्ट्रोल साइकिल वेर एज प्रोजेस्टिर इट हेल्प ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी राइट एंड ऑल्सो इन द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ सेकेंडरी सेक्शुअल कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स इन फीमेल ओके एंड देन there are there are plant hormones which are important these are the five important plant hormones from the from which the question can be asked auxin gibberellin cytokinin abscisic acid ethylene okay so there is these are the three important diagrams from which the you you might get diagram based question neuron and the reflex action brain okay yes yes glands glands are important like you will have to know that which gland is secreting which hormone right and what is its function and all that so in this particular chapter we started with the components of nervous system right wherein we studied about you know the starting we studied about receptors and then uh, when i did the control and coordination chapter i have already spoken about the receptors and then we started about neurons and then how is the L ah, and electrical the transmission of electrical impulse is also important that is that concept is also important which i have explained in this particular session okay after that there it's very easy right i've already explained that and then on the other hand peripheral nervous system it has got set of nerves you will only have to mention how many pairs of nerves are present it has cranial nerves and uh, the A spinal nerves, right? How many pairs you will have? Just have to mention that. That's it. Okay. And after that, we studied about reflex action also, and then we have already spoken about endocrine system as well, the characteristics of hormone and all that. What? Uh, we make MCQ karva sakti. Yes, we'll be we'll be doing MCQ. Uh, I guess three thirty or four. There is one more live we quiz. There is we quiz. thank you tarun thank you yes yes you can so yeah after this session so these are the diagram based questions that can be ex expected from this chapter that's it and then one more thing in plant hormone the this is important and trophic movement is important those five types whereas the nastic movement is not that important okay so this is all about this particular session tarun suhas sir will be watching this he'll be watching this okay so students any other doubt from this particular chapter these are the expected these are the expected diagram based question from this particular chapter okay students so after this session there is week quiz okay chemistry versus bio over there i have included uh, mcqs from all the five chapters from biology there is see from life process chapter i have included question even control and coordination it is there and even how do organism reproduce after that heredity chapter from that also i have included and then finally our environment from all the five chapters from all the five chapters i have included the uh, questions Okay, vasectomy. You have uh, one more. Aditya, I'll be doing that tomorrow. I'll be doing that tomorrow, so I can clarify that tomorrow in that particular session. Do you have any doubt in this session? Control and coordination. Do you have any doubts from control and coordination, students? Students, come on. Do you have any doubts in control and coordination? Yes, yes. Vasek Tommy, Vasek Tommy, uh, Aditya. Anyway, I'll be coming now. Uh, week quiz. Shall I explain it to you over there? I will explain that in brief. Now we'll be ending this session. Okay. Okay, Tarun. So no doubts from this chapter. 
Okay, fine. So I'll end the session anyway. Again, there is a uh, week quiz. We'll be conducting that. Uh, I guess around three thirty or four. So you can ask me doubts there as well. And uh, now, if you have any doubts, you can note them down and ask me uh, during that week quiz. Okay. Ratna, I've already explained double circulation in the morning session. I've already explained that. Okay. Prashant, I'll get back to you by three thirty. Okay. Now. I'll end the session. We'll continue again the week quiz in the evening one. Three thirty or four, we'll be starting that. Okay, students. So yeah, this is it for today's session. This is it for this particular session. And uh, thank you all, and have a great day. And also all the best for your preparation.